All right, guys, so I've had a couple of requests for a walk around video of my 55 Tudor hardtop project here. So I thought I'd go ahead and do that. Now, keep in mind, I did say project. So I still have to sand and paint the hood, and then it'll have to be sanded and polished and then put on. I still have to assemble my flippers and get them installed. Uh, and I still have to finish two seat shells and get them put on and then upholster the trunk. And the car's pretty much done. So it's been a lot of work uh, this is the uh, i've built a lot of cars i've built a lot of 55 chevys too but uh, this is the first one i've ever spent this much time and this much money on uh, this one uh, i got this car uh, third month second day of march of 2013 so that makes it exactly 10 years uh, now so it, uh, it, it's kind of amazing to me. I never went this far on detailing on stuff. Like, I'd spent way more time on the chassis, I think, than anything else on the car. There's a lot of work in that chassis. It is an original chassis. I didn't have the money to buy an aftermarket one, so I tried to make this one, you know, really, really nice. I did put an X center in the chassis and, you know, stiffened it up and stuff. But. Anyway, it's a 55 Tudor Hardtop Bel Air. Uh, this is, uh, it's got a, 1976 Chevy 400 small block in it. That's 30 over, so it's 406. Has a 700 or a four overdrive transmission in it. Has a 373 posi rear. It's four wheel disc brakes with drilled and slotted rotors. It does have front and rear sway bars, which I, when I had the car, when I was doing mock up in the raw metal stage, they were mocked up and fit, uh, but they need to be painted. And I haven't done that yet. I keep forgetting about the stupid sway bars. But this car came to me as a total stripped apart hulk it was just the body shell with no glass in it no wiring no nothing no engine no transmission uh, it was bolted to the frame with four body mount bolts two between the front two in the back it had a 56 chevy sedan frame under it that they'd already painted but the front frame horn was bent so i ended up putting a 55 chassis under it and did a whole bunch of work to it but Let's get started. I'll give you a walk around here. So this is just a uh, single stage black that's sanded and polished. I did every bit of the work to this car myself. It has never left this property in 10 years uh, to be worked on by somebody else. Uh, I had the seat covers, the, the armrests, the headliner and the sun visor stitched by Ciadella. And then I did all the work on the seats myself. Uh, foamed them, wrapped them, covered them, made my own door panels and everything. I put the headliner in and everything. And then the subwoofer box in the trunk, my neighbor actually made it because he has a wood shop out there. So, anyway, there's a whole lot of work done to the car. It's subtlety. Uh, I did all kinds of custom stuff to this car, but if you don't know 55 Chevys, you're not going to know what was done. This is, there's a lot of custom stuff done to this thing. Um, it would take an hour for me to go through and show you every little thing that I'd done to this car. And the idea was to keep it, you know, looking like a 55 Chevy, but I also wanted to keep it easy to maintain, easy to work on, uh, and inexpensive to, to keep going. So I kept it carbureted. I kept it small block Chevy. Um, and it's all just basic. There's no air conditioning. There's no power steering. It's just simple. It's simplicity is finest, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, this, uh, it is lowered. I've got it lowered about five inches. Uh, it's got two inch blocks in the back, three inch drop leafs. And then the front has two inch drop spindles and lowering coils. But anyway, I'll get you started here. So of course I don't have the hood on it yet, but these panels were custom made with hidden fasteners on the back side. And the factory ones are really ugly, paper thin sheet metal. I got holes all in them and they have visible bolts out here. So all that got customized. Uh, the inner fenders, there's all kinds of raised spots and like sunken indents for wiring harness to come through and stuff like that. Holes everywhere. All the holes got welded up and all those odd shaped areas got cut out, metal formed and butt welded in and smooth. So the inner fenders are completely smoothed uh, out on the car. Uh, so the chassis is where I spent most of the time. The chassis got completely smooth. There's no visible weld seams on the chassis. Everything's completely molded in and smooth. Uh, it's a, I plated in the top of the chassis up here, I plated in the rear, I plated in the side down there, and also the sides of the frame horns. This is an open channel, and you can kind of see it down through there how it's plated in. But I wanted the top of the frame up here real smooth, so I've sheet metaled it all the way down uh, to about midway on the top of the floorboard under there. So uh, 
I just wanted this to look nice. I made my own engine mounts, cross member and all that, but the motor mounts are, they're all smooth, smooth to mold in. I even speed hold those energy suspension motor mounts. But I'm pretty proud of it. I tried to put a lot of detail in it by clean up and smoothing and all that kind of stuff. There's no visible weld seams on the A-arms. All this got smoothed. Uh, I even plated in the A-arm sections here and put tubing in there. Man, I mean, <laughs> tons of work. Originally, the, the bolts go this way, sticking out, so when you looked in here, you'd see threads. So I reversed it, and I put square nuts and welded them to the inner fender, so the bolts go in this way. I put 12-point 12 12 point ARP stainless bolts in everything. They're in anything I could get them in on the car, they're on it. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that was one of the themes of the car. And then speed holes. I wanted a few speed holes in things. So I speed hold the grill tie bar and uh, like the engine mounts and the A-arms. I speed hold those and step those. Uh, I built the throttle linkage and speed hold it. I even built the kick down bracket myself and I put a little knife blade look thing in the back with step speed holes in it, which is basically just a spring holder. The idea of that was it's adjustable with the three speed holes in it. Uh, for a spring tension, I could go, you know, which I got it on the tightest setting now. But I wanted to make it look like an original V8 265 that the car would have come with, so it has a lot of original styling cues off of that with the front oil fill, the uh, Chevrolet scripted valve covers, and the factory four barrel air cleaner. But I did modify it into a cold air induction. Originally, I just have a snout that comes out, uh, so now it's a cold air looking induction kit. So anyway, I put a can in and Boss logo in here. This is out of an air cleaner. And the reason I did that was to make it look like it was a store-bought part, like it was made for the car, which I really did make it for the car, but it doesn't look like I made it in a two-car garage. I did everything right here in the driveway and in a two-car garage. So this is completely, you know, amateur built. I was trying to make the car look like a high-end build, but on a budget. And, and yes, I said budget. This car is very, very budget done. Uh, I think the most expensive parts was the wheels. That was the most expensive thing I ever bought was the wheels. <clears throat> I have actually never spent that much money on wheels before. I've always bought put wheels on my car, but I have never spent that much on wheels. I made my own plug wire dividers out of square tubing, and that's just to hide the wires. And then I used some 3 16 steel brake line in areas to hide wiring. Uh, there's two tabs welded to this. Uh, brake line and it actually those are holes that were already in the intake so I just use those but it just it just hides that wire so you don't see nothing going across the top of the intake it kind of blends in with it being orange I built my own uh, bracket for the fuel pressure regulator I put a mid-mount alternator bracket on to get that alternator down instead of having it up here in your face now I did take the alternator completely apart I decasted it, which means, you know, the rough cast, and I sanded it all smooth, then I used Z-Chrome primer on it, and then blocked it out to make it slick. But I did drill speed holes in it, and I put silver paint uh, in the speed holes to give it a little detail, so the alternator case is even customized. I did uh, speed holes in these rear brackets back here, and I put silver paint detail in those as well, and I even did the rear, which you'd never see. Just tons of work. Uh, this is part of a hood right here. It should have another section of louver. So now my hood peak goes all the way to the windshield instead of just the hood. <clears throat> so this is an air dam I made, lower air dam. I made this from an original front bumper. Uh, I sectioned it, cut it to pieces, and then welded it all together. And then I plated it in so it looks like a mail slot. And that is uh, access for the air intake for the transmission cooler. And then under here, you can see really all the work in the chassis down here and all the smoothing and painting of the A-arms. I built a little cover right there to go on the front to hide the hardware for the uh, core support. The spindles are two-inch cast drop spindles from Magagi's. Those got sanded down, decast and smoothed. Also, the center link, the idler arm, got all decast and smoothed. Uh, the little knuckles that bolt onto the spindles, those were smoothed and painted. But it, it, it turned out really, really nice, man. It was tons and tons and tons of work. I actually mounted the headlight buckets behind the fender. Uh, and that way, you know, these cars to me look bug-eyed. The headlights stick way out. You can see a lot of the headlight ring poking out. So I mounted it in behind. So that fixed that. 
So underneath the car is Raptor lined, the inner fender backsides are Raptor lined, which is a bed liner. Um, anyways, to keep it from rock chipping and all that kind of stuff, but I have ARP bolts and a lot of stuff. There's little brackets right here that you cannot see. I've got those speed holes as well. You can't even see them. The uh, bracket right here for the bumper, I made those. That was some pretty thick wall tubing. And uh, I built my own tabs and everything, custom made them. Uh, but there's no visible weld seams on those as well. But the cool thing about making your own bumper brackets, uh, originally they kind of go in an angle back that way, um, and they're just a channel piece, uh, is I custom made the length to where I could pull the bumper in to end further. So I think that's kind of nice, because originally the bumpers hang way out. So you can actually shorten your originals and get your bumper tucked in a little bit tighter. So I've got the same exact gap on the other side. I made my own brake caliper covers out of sheet metal on all four corners and I used Bel Air dash scripts in chrome. So uh, it looks really nice. <clears throat> Get you down here. Now I still have to sand and paint or sand and polish the bottom of the rocker and the pinch wheel. I haven't sanded and buffed that yet. So it's pretty, you know, the paint's not that slick, but all the body mounts are smoothed in. They're fully welded and smoothed in and edged in. So you can't see any welds on the body mounts. I built those custom covers on there. So all of this is all, you know, a bunch of custom stuff done. I built a standoff bracket for the Holly fuel filter that unbolts. I even played it in the area for the leaf spring hanger. It's all boxed in. There's some anti-seas around that bolt I need to clean off there. <clears throat> Come around to the back here. So I have a smoothie bumper back here as well. I have a fold-up license plate bracket so at the shows I can fold the plate up if I want to. Now the frame right here is open from the factory and I put a piece of plate in here and I bent the ends in so I'd have access to the body mounts. But there's a Chevrolet script right here and it looks like it's embossed in that. That's actually out of another valve cover. But you can see the how this is all smoothed in and, and plated in. There's no extra holes in the chassis. They're all welded up with, with metal. And then you can kind of see the center section I put in the in the frame. It has a stainless exhaust from front to back in it, headers and all. The rear end, there's going to be a sway bar going in these brackets here, but uh, anyway, the rear end, the center section's cast, and I decasted it and smoothed it and blocked it, painted it. I also did the rear end girdle cover too, but uh, anyway, I built these drop down boxes right here. This is a drop down box with a cover, and this is all custom made here. And I had to build corners here because originally this was rounded for the splash apron. Uh, the problem with that was, the reason I did that is you can see up inside the quarter panel. So if I put the car on stands with, you know, lights and mirrors under it, you'd be able to see up in the quarter and be very difficult to keep that clean. So I just built the drop down boxes. It's over here as well. So the shocks I have on the car are toxic shocks. They're made for lowered vehicles, so they're a little bit stiffer uh, than your over-the-counter average shock. They came flat white, so I went down and had the paint mixed, and I used the new Dodge color that you see on some of the cars. It's ceramic gray or destroyer gray or something, I don't remember. So the leaf spring perches that are on the rear end and the brackets for the sway bar and all that is completely welded in and molded in the rear end, and it's high gloss. So the rear end actually looks like it was cast, and even the webbing on the rear end, I speed holed it and stepped it. It was a lot of work, man. It, uh, a lot of work but I still got to do the flippers still got to get them done get the hood done upholster the trunk and I need to finish up the stupid seat shells even made my own wing nut that is an exact replica of the hood ornament that goes on the car it's called a hood bird so to show you this like on the door jams all the door jams got completely wiped with filler and then blocked out slick same as here and a lot of the stuff got smoothed out. There's a big indent here that all got molded in, uh, plated in and then molded in. Um, let's see, the hood hinge, or the door hinges, these are really, really rough from the factory. This all got flattened off. The edges got chamfered and then I drilled a speed hole and chamfered it and put silver paint detail in it as well. But even the face plates got blocked out. Uh, anyway, one of the jams really nice on the car. I put uh, reflectors in here, I did built some uh, pockets and fringed in some reflectors. I even speed hold the bracket for the door lock. 
but I did the door panels myself, the kick panels, the package tray. I put the covers on the seats. I put the headliner in. There's no wrinkles in the headliner. Uh, I mean, it, it turned out really, really, really slick. Now, this is what I'm working on. Is this, I'm still working on seat shells. These actually go down here on the seat. And I've got this one done. I've still got to do the other side. They have to be foamed and wrapped. And then this one goes here to hide that nastiness on the seat. This one was, uh, this one was difficult, uh, way more difficult than that one. This one has all kinds of corners on it, and those corners just create all kinds of issues. And I got it all done without wrinkles, but I spent an hour and a half wrapping this, so that's a pretty difficult piece to wrap. So uh, I'm pretty proud of it. It. Uh, yeah, I spend a lot of time when I do stuff, but I try to do it to the best I can. And I, sh I just showed this the other day in a video, but since we're doing a walk around, this is uh, this is part of original off a of sedan that were really, really rough uh, paint dividers. And I've formed them to fit and curve around that. Very difficult piece to do with those beads in it. Uh, anyway, I made my own package tray. I used the same grill mesh back there as I did on the front up here and a couple of things. These are actually exhaust tips from Pet Boys. And I got them because they have a rolled edge. And these are speaker pods. I have one on each side of the dash, but I put metal mesh in there. Uh, but anyway, I used the same metal mesh in this also. This is where the speaker was in these cars originally. It had a 6 by 9 here. And if you don't put a speaker in here and you change that mesh out to where it has bigger holes in it like this does. <laughs> the original had real tiny holes drilled in it. Uh, you can see inside the dash back in there. So I built a block off panel. And if you look back in there, you'll see the side of a 55 Chevy, two or top. I cut the side off a 55 Hot Wheel and panel bonded it in there. And it looks like it's stamped into the metal. <clears throat> but anyway, the dash is pretty much all stock. Uh, I did extend the glove box door. It's supposed to have an ashtray. It's about that wide right here. It flips down and I welded it to the side, but I also built a flange all the way around. So it looks like a stamped out one piece glove box. So uh, the back side has two little indents in it for cup holders, little shallow things. Uh, so this all got replated in. I even speed hold and silver detailed the bracket there. I built a steel insert for the glove box and that's the dial for the shift light which is inside that autotronic eye. That is not an autotronic eye anymore. It's a shift light. And then I got a 12 volt outlet in here and then a Kenwood radio. Uh, but anyway this is textured paint that I painted gray and that's to make it look like the gray felt line glove box liner that the car would originally have had. But I put 12-point ARPs in that. I even plated in this little piece here because this is open from the factory, just a piece of C-channel. Uh, and I put a piece in there to make it all smooth. This is a Kleenex tissue dispenser that was an option you could get on these cars, a reproduction of it. Uh, and I built new brackets to where it goes in flat because originally they set at an angle and when you kick them out they're at an angle. So I made it into a cup holder system. I plated in the back side and the top side and then hole sawed it and put in these plastic cup holders and they're shallow so you don't see them hanging down under there so the car has a deluxe heater box in it that's factory they had a standard and they had a deluxe and this was a deluxe and that is a quarter panel crest that i panel bonded on and molded in there so it looks like it's stamped into the metal that's actually one of these right here but an original and then you can kind of see right there the brake pedal and the gas pedal uh arms are speed hold and silver paint detail in those as well the gas pedal when i had to flatten the sides off uh, it is originally just solid round so i made it flat on the sides before i drilled it and they're stepped and everything i welded square nuts on the flanges for the screws for the screens uh, so now it takes 12 point arps as well so a smooth dash trim here this is bow ties original for a 55 bel air but originally they had a radio cut out they had a cigarette lighter they had a headlight switch so i got the smoothie set um, my headlight switch is mounted just underneath the dash but anyway i took my original pieces and made backgrounds for the heater the speedometer and the clock which the battery's dead in the clock this is actually a double a movement it takes a double a battery from hobby lobby so. Anyway, you can see that speedometer with the bow tie in behind it. 
This chrome dash parts have all re chromed These are original components. This is a smaller in stock Bel Air 55 steering wheel, same as 56. But this is a 16 inch for Mutton Hollow instead of the normal 15 inch. I don't have power steering, so I needed that extra, just a little bit bigger deal there. And like I said, that's an Autotronic eye. Originally, that would have dimmed the headlights for oncoming traffic, but they were very problematic from a factory, and they had photo tubes or whatever that's called. Uh, so anyway, I took all the guts out of it, and I put the chipboard out of the shift light in there and extended the wire. So now when it gets to its desired RPM, when I wind it up tight, it'll I'll see the glare off the windshield. But I made a triple gauge pod out of exhaust pipe and pipe caps and tubing, so now I have autometer triple gauge set up there on the A-pillar. I really like that. That was uh, pretty neat. It's kind of funny, the, the seat covers, uh, I called Ciadel and I told him I wanted the original gray straw cloth that this car would have had. This car was originally from the factory, coral and gray. So it was that pink color, you know, uh, two-tone. So the interior was coral vinyl and gray straw cloth. But what's funny is on these cars, the gray straw cloth you only got from the factory, you got this in the seat. The door panels were actually gray vinyl. So the only cloth was in the seat. So I did it with the gray on the door panel, but I had them change the coral to black vinyl. Now this is called, this is Elante. This is the brand. Uh, the Elante is supposed to be a leather simulant. It kind of looks and feels like leather, super soft. It's very, very easy to work with. Uh, but Ciadella stitched my seat covers for me and then I put I foamed the seats and then put them on and I ordered extra yardage of the vinyl and the gray straw cloth to do my trunk and the interior of the car but I did the kick panels the door panels and the package tray myself they pre-sewed the armrests because they have stitching in them and also the rear armrests back there uh, they stitched the headliner which is an imitation suede I didn't have the money for real suede uh, this is a cloth, but it, it, it like lays just like suede does, how you can put marks in it. Uh, there's no wrinkles in this thing. Uh, but anyway, they've done the sun visors to match. This has the black Elante uh, finger pads. Man, that's dusty. has the black Elante finger pads on it. So, I, I, I love it, man. I mean, it, it's been a long road, 10 years, I'm telling you, but... Uh, like I said, I've never went this far on a build before, but I am very, very proud of this car. Uh, I can put this car on stands with lights and mirrors under it and be proud of it. After I sand and polish the bottom of the rockers, anyway. <clears throat> I probably have to repolish re the stainless exhaust. I'm sure it's probably dulled out by now a little bit. But anyway, it uh, it's it's turned out to be a beautiful car, and I'm I love it. So. And I think the hood and the flippers and the the two seat shells and the upholstery in the trunk and the car is pretty much done. I did do a windshield washer, a glass jar. This is what an option for the car, and I did highly modify this. Like the whole lid is sheet metaled. Uh, anyway, it's all electric and it works off the factory button in the dash just like factory. This all customized. If you want to do this to your Tri-5 Chevy like I did, it's very inexpensive. Um, I have a how-to on that in my Tri-5 Tech Tips playlist. So if you go to my channel and then click on playlist, you'll find it in there. But it works off the factory button right here on the, on the factory knob. There is a micro switch behind there. A little push button. Anyway, guys, that is the uh, 55 Tudor hardtop project because it's still not done yet. <clears throat> I'll show you this side of the, the chassis here. I have a Willwood adjustable proportioning valve under there. Just really proud of it, man. It uh, <laughs> this thing is it has kicked my butt. Let me tell you, but uh, I am overcoming slowly but surely so it is the factory horns on the car i did take them all apart all these separate little brackets i took apart uh, these corners got rounded and i even body filled them blocked them primed them blocked them and painted them so all this stuff is uh, even highly customized so lots and lots of work custom made a bracket in the firewall to hold the flexible dipstick. I did it in an angle so it would be easier to get to instead of having to lean way over to pull straight up. 
but that's pretty much it so anyway thanks for watching